a cage. Lock yourself in. Welcome to my dungeon, sweet ears. It's lovely to have you on board. You don't know the difference it makes to an old lag like me to know that you are out there. The Geiger counter tells me that you've been clicking follow on the interwebs, and I thank you. A couple of weeks ago in the cage, I talked about the history of West Papua and the role of the US in handing over the former Dutch colony to Indonesia so that a handful of American shareholders could proceed to build the world's largest gold mine. We're talking three billion US dollars a year for the last 60 years. Last week, evidence was revealed that the Secretary General of the United Nations in 1961, Doug Hammarskjöld, was actively supporting the West Papuan independence movement and was assassinated in the Congo by a South African group funded and directed by the CIA. Alexander Dulles, the director of the CIA, pictured here in the army uniform, wrote a letter demanding the removal of Hammarskjöld in a plan known as Operation Celeste. The report also refers to the 2020 book, JFK versus Alan Dulles, Battleground Indonesia, by Brisbane author Dr. Greg Polgrain, and a 2019 documentary made in Denmark. Two years ago, the Indonesian government forced the American company to sell half the mine to them for an undisclosed sum. They'll be paying for it for quite a while. So, ladies and gentlemen, sweet ears, as I like to call you, the cage is not wild speculation or just a crazed dark rant. We might be buried 10 metres underground, but we keep our finger on the pulse. Last week, we made snide references to a billionaire who wants to live on Mars. The temptation to move upstream when you have failed your water supply is as old as humanity itself. The challenge, though, is simple mathematics. We keep coming back to mathematics in the cage, and that's not just because we have the time to count to very large numbers down here, where the water drips approximately every 1.3 seconds, and we separate night from day by counting to 33,230, and then starting all over again. Mathematics and the music of the spheres are the eternal truths that not only make the world go round, but give us hope of a perfect world beyond the actual grit and grime that gets under your fingernails, whether you are locked up or not. David Suzuki does a brilliant rendition of Al Bartlett's bacteria in a jar metaphor, which shows that moving house to leave your trash behind barely gives you time to unpack your pyjamas before the junk starts to overrun you. The logic is simple. If you grow by a certain percentage over some period of time, known as steady growth, then there is a doubling period. Al Bartlett's classic experiment is a jar full of nutritious goop and a couple of strepobraniac bacteria that double in population every minute. The end of time for these brainy bugs is when they eat all the goop and they all die. At that point, the jar is 100% full. Since their population doubles every minute, one minute before midnight, one minute before the end of their world, the jar is half full and half of all the food that was ever available is still left. Half full or half empty, sweet ears, depending if you're an optimistic strepobraniac or you hail from that pessimistic strain, the strepomaniac. Two minutes before the end of time, the jar is one quarter full of bugs and three quarters empty or full of food. Three minutes before the end of time, it's one eighth full and there's 87.5% of the food left. Yum, yum, nothing to worry about. At that stage, most bugs will not care because only 12.5% of the food has gone and there's plenty for everybody. Enthusiastic, ambitious, developer kind of bugs will be yelling and pushing for economic growth. Now, let's imagine that you have really smart bugs who are capable of forward planning and they get scared at five minutes to midnight because 3% of the food has gone and they know that in a couple of minutes it's all over Red Rover. So they make plans to jump from this jam jar into a new jar before the world ends. At two minutes to midnight, half of them jump ship and move to a new jar thanks to Bacillus Muscus and his jar jumping outfit, Jar X. 
Now, instead of having two minutes left to live, they have three. They have gained their selves an exactly one minute thanks to this mammoth effort. Of course, that assumes that the ship jar jump does not consume the same resources as Bacillus Brainiac. Otherwise, that would make the numbers worse. Of course, if only a handful of bugs skip to Reno and leave the rest of us behind holding the can, they will give themselves a bit more breathing space. Unless they stop breeding, though, history will repeat itself anyway. So, now to us, fellow humans. Our numbers are a bit more generous. Right now, the Earth's population is doubling every 60 years, but our total consumption of resources is doubling more than twice as fast. And that's why Eco Radio's Dave correctly reminds me that consumption is more important than population. However, the amount of resources consumed is the number of consumers times the amount of consumption per human. And both those numbers are still going up. Let's say that the double period of human resource consumption is 20 years rather than one minute we gave our bug family. Depending how hot you want to let it get, the IPCC says we have between 8 and 32 years before we hit the wall. And yet our billionaire friends want us to believe that their trip to Mars is going to save humanity. It won't work, suckers. It's simply going to mean that they will piss off and leave us holding their rubbish bags. At best, it can save a couple of thousand people, but I guess that's the sum total of all their friends. I'm reminded of the cautionary tales of Ray Bradbury's The Martian Chronicles. The problem for you and I, sweetie, is, is that regardless of whether you're on the spaceships or left behind, the only way your grandchildren are going to get to see the sunshine is if we radically pull our heads in right now and learn to live frugally. The wellness budget cannot include economic growth. It has to be static state. The future is post-growth, and that's dictated by simple arithmetic. <laughs>